Oh, hi. So, uh, so what's new? I, I don't want to minimize my gratitude to you for the kind of support that's usually reserved for like Chilean miners. I'll be talking about it and the issues and the rest of my little adventure later in the show, but I need to address one thing right now. I read in a couple of places that this has to have been a publicity stunt. This was not a publicity stunt. Of course, if I had known that all this would happen, I would have done this years ago! I'd like to close tonight by discussing something that I'm sure has happened to you dozens of times in your own life. You know, when there's a petition supporting you and it winds up being signed by 300,000 people and you get 21,000 tweets in a 72-hour period, and then you're invited to be on television because you aren't on television, because they want you to be the lead story on Good Morning America and Larry King and Letterman, and you break the traffic records on the Huffington Post, and you're on the front page of the New York Times without being dead or in jail or Charlie Sheen or something. Well, maybe you're used to it, but for me it was kind of a surprise. And all I can seriously say is I'm stunned and grateful and it still feels like a universal hug. I owe you three apologies, foremost for having subjected you to all this unnecessary drama. The White House is on the phone for you. Seriously? Another for not having known by observation, since it's not in my contract, that NBC had rules about getting permission for making political donations, even though any rule like that in any company is probably not legal. The third apology, meanwhile, is very specific and it doubles as a correction. It is quite accurate that I contributed to the campaigns of Attorney General Conway and Congresswoman Giffords and Congressman Grijalva on the same day I interviewed Mr. Grijalva. But the reporting I've seen has just sort of assumed that I donated, then interviewed, and so I should have disclosed it when I interviewed. The sequence was, in fact, the reverse. I didn't even think about contributing until hours after the interview with Representative Grijalva. If I had come on the air the next day and said, hey, I contributed to Grijalva and Giffords and Conway last night, knowing the way you responded to stories like the free health care clinics and the Cranick family in Tennessee, there would have been a lot of donations to them. And then suddenly I'm fundraising for them passive aggressively and suddenly we're accidentally Fox. However, the day after the donations, I included the opponent in the race against Congresswoman Giffords in the old worst persons segment. I never made the connection that he, Jesse Kelly, was running against her. I should have either made it clear I had contributed to her campaign or better still, just dropped him from the segment. So I apologize to you and to Mr. Kelly. There's one more point on the ethics of the thing and disclosure, and I'll save that for the end. After I play the late night comedian's jokes about me, which I will do after a few personal thanks, I'd like to name all 300,000 signatories to that petition, but obviously I can't. And anyway, 99% of them were my relatives. And I'd like to thank the columnists and commentators and reporters who gave their support, or at least a fair hearing, and especially those in that group with whom my politics do not overlap. Jonah Goldberg, William Crystal, and Dana Lash probably treated me better than I would have treated them. Rick Sanchez clearly did that. They get my thanks and respect, although they probably wish they didn't. Three more. Let me thank Thomas Roberts for filling in and Chris Hayes for not filling in. And of course, let me thank dear Rachel for saying so much when saying anything would have been enough. And now, let the party begin. Here's a story you may have heard about. Uh, MSNBC News anchor Keith Oberman will be back to work on Wednesday after being suspended without pay for giving campaign contributions to Democratic candidates, which is against the rules at MSNBC. See, if only he'd done like Elliot Spitzer and given his money to hookers, huh? <laughs> he would have gotten his own primetime show on CNN. See that? See, you just have to... See, John Klein, I told you that's how we should have done it. Okay, so that was Jay, and then there was John Stewart. We criticized each other a week back. I have to say, I took the spirit of his larger meaning, and as a result, benched worse persons. I think he took the spirit of my larger meaning, and he described parts of his rally as inartful. But back to the subject of me. On that topic, John promptly hit a series of tape measure home runs. That's the great thing about America. We all have the freedom to have our own opinions and say and do what we wish. MSNBC has suspended Keith Olbermann from making political donations. Almost everybody has that right. <laughs> it seems on Friday Keith Olbermann broke an MSNBC rule by making campaign donations without first obtaining permission from the network. Because MSNBC has a hard and fast rule that political donations represent bias in journalism unless you ask first. <laughs> 
I read somebody's 10,000 word essay on the journalistic ethics of donations and John just boiled it down to 17 with a PS of 21 words. You learn your manners, boy, or I'll knock you down to hosting headliners and legends so fast your head'll spin. <laughs> anyway, Oberman was suspended indefinitely. I mean, it's bad enough they already suspended his mustache. Boom! <laughs> Boom! Oh, that was gratuitous. No, it wasn't. It was a bad mustache. It looked like I was dressed up for Halloween as Ming the Merciless from Flash Gordon. Anyway, suspended indefinitely, there's no telling how long it'll be till we see Keith Olbermann again. MSNBC says Keith Olbermann will be back on the air tomorrow night. <laughs> Lesson learned. <laughs> yes, MSNBC. It's a stupid rule, but at least it was enforced poorly. It's not a stupid rule here or anywhere else. It just needs to debate about it. It needs to be adapted to the realities of 21st century journalism. But to wrap this up, I'll say something utterly contrarian about this. I think we saw where the political contribution system is working for transparency and democracy and where it is failing transparency and democracy. I made legal political contributions as a U.S. citizen near midnight Eastern on Thursday night, October 28th. By 10 p.m. Eastern on Thursday night, November 4th, those contributions were public knowledge. And that's the point. I gave, and you found out, and you judged me for good or for ill as you felt appropriate. If I had given the money through the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, you would have never, ever known.